Oh gosh. <laughs> Mom, your dog is rancid. She's farting. Oh, and it's like under the pillow. So I'm sure if I lift that pillow right now, it's it gets just a million like times worse. Nuclear. Oh god. No. Oh geez. No, you come smell this and tell me this doesn't sound like something died. Wait, wait, we, we haven't even started. We haven't even started. <laughs> Dog's trying to kill us. Cool. Uh, huh. Hey, it'd be a good way to die. I no. <laughs> There's <laughs> way better ways to die than dog flatulence. <laughs> What's up, ladies and gentlemen? My name is Paul, and uh, I'm here today actually with uh, my good buddy Drew Lowen because uh, we did a thing. Wait, what? I'm so confused about that start. We did do a thing. Yeah, we we did. A oh thing. my god, she's seriously still farting. <laughs> she's just like even. I'm moving. I'm moving you. As you can tell, depending on which channel you're watching this on, we kind of did a little bit of a collab thing. Yeah. We did a. I mean, I, I mean, given the fact that we're sitting in the same room on camera, I mean. Collab is kind of kind of obvious. Yeah. What thing did we do? Well, I mean, it does feel like almost kind of a spur of the moment idea, but we got together the it other day. It was literally a spur. Of the the, moment literally idea. a spur of the moment idea. We got together the other day and um, we whacked out this idea of what were we calling it? Story versus eye candy or something like that. Yeah. It was. It's kind of like, what is the difference between a video that is technically beautiful? versus one that was made with a story in mind. And so, uh, and this is kind of a response to the fact that so many videos are following what's trendy and just doing like the cool B-roll thing with good sound design and awesome camera movements, which looks great. Um, but we were wanting to see what the difference was of just doing something with the intention of making it look cool and then having to figure out how to turn it into a story later in post versus coming up with the story and then making every decision in the filming process and the editing process based on that story. Exactly, and I'm gonna just, I'm just spit it out right now. Shooting something that is just visually pretty, like you're shooting it for eye candy, it's a lot easier when you're actually shooting it. The, the part that's gonna have you banging your head on the wall is post. Yep. 100%. Post. Right, yeah. I mean, that was the experience I had. Um, and I, I mean, we shot, I think both of us are, are unicorn B-roll is kind of what we started calling it because it's just <laughs> yeah. like, it's pretty and weird and... And weird yeah. lighting. Yeah. yeah. Weird lighting. Um, our unicorn B-roll took like 10 minutes to light, 15 minutes to shoot and we were done. Yep. And that was, yours was that way as well. Um, yeah, maybe I a think, little longer. I think mine probably took like 20 minutes, even yeah. though, even though Drew was like, okay, you can't plan your shots. Yeah, because we the idea originally wasn't to plan our shots. Then we kind of realized that's a little bit impossible because we had to create scenarios. Yeah. Whereas if we had like an event to go to, we could do a true like run and gun thing. Yeah. Anyways, the, the challenge was still mostly the same. We didn't plan that much in our first sequence. Mm -hmm. um, and we just made lighting decisions and camera decisions that looked cool yep. rather than the ones that made sense for the story. Let's just put it this way. Our first sequences of, you know, what, like what we're terming the unicorn B-roll, easier to shoot for sure, but the entire thing was nothing but rule of cool. Like, yeah. Like, like that, that, was, that was the precedence was as long as it looks good, cool, who really cares? Right, like, right. Which, I mean, unfortunately, this you know this is not a bash on anyone in particular, but there's there's a lot of creators out there that their content is just rule of cool. There's it doesn't right. have much substance to it, and that was kind of what we wanted to what we wanted to experiment with the rule of cool, do it and shoot it just so it looks cool, versus answering the why. Why right. does this look like this? Why is this being shot this mm -hmm. way? You know, right. Yeah, and I mean, both are valid. I think, well, we've kind of explained it enough. Pretty much. Let's show them our unicorn B-roll segments. <laughs> That's so hard to say so, with a straight face. It is hard to <laughs> So unicorn B-roll starting now.
So those were our segments. As you can see, they were just really annoyingly lit. Mm -hmm. uh, so with mine, I basically just threw some gels on my lights, threw some barn doors in weird ways towards the subject, which was the record player. And then I literally had my fiance, Gina, just do her thing with the record and I just film stuff kind of as it happened. And I mean, seriously, it was probably like 15 minutes of, of shooting total, not just like length of footage if you combined it, like literally time spent shooting. And it probably took me like 20 minutes to edit it. One thing I realized is in post, I picked a song that kind of went with the lighting and I think that made it more cohesive as a story. Mm -hmm. But if you notice, it's kind of like upbeat music with like club lighting and like really cool camera movements. Yeah. So that all ended up working out really well in my favor because I found a good song. But like the setting of the actual record player was my living room. The, you know, I mean, Gina was dressed like she normally does. She wasn't dressed like she was at a nightclub or anything. Mm -hmm. And then the record was like definitely not EDM music. So, no. so all those things, like if this was more planned, you could have made that more cohesive and it would have been better. Um, and then the other thing is it like, it looked cool. It actually ended up having a story of like, oh, we're putting a record on and it's music and it's exciting, but I don't think it would be that powerful. Like, I don't think someone would see this and remember it, or if it was an ad, it would necessarily move them to anything. It didn't have enough direction or forethought, but I like how it looked. Yeah, like you, you definitely nailed the, the unicorn eye candy kind of a thing. Right. But the thing that's very frustrating with shooting in situations or shooting with in a style dare i say like this is the fact that bless you twice are you done over there anyway i digress the problem with shooting content in a style if i may be so bold is that you have to take what it is you've shot and when you get into post, it's, okay, how do I make this work? Instead right. of shooting in a way that you know it's gonna work. You have to, like, I mean, you know, it's like, right. try, it's like trying to take a Lego set that's supposed to build a house and trying to build a car out of it instead. Yeah. The thing that I compare it to most is my early shoots with clients. I kind of did that, um, and with weddings. But I, I thought about that even more even in the context of a client shoot or a wedding, there's things that they will have in their mind that is sort of like a pre-plan. And if not, then yeah, you have to do this. You have to show up, shoot stuff that looks cool, and then figure out how to make it cohesive in post, which right. is possible, but it's never as good as when you do it the other way. Exactly, and, I, and in, a, in a medium that is, uh, that is heavily story, or at least ought to be heavily story-driven, Shooting stuff and then trying to put it together later, yes, you can have a story, but like you just said, it's never going to be as good. Right. So. And with something like weddings, the planning is still actually done. It's just not us doing it usually as filmmakers. We show up, there's a very particular schedule. Yeah, it's basically done for us. So yeah. Wedding planners, <laughs> thank you. Right, right, right. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, all the shots are just the same stuff, you know, like, oh, cool, let's get some foreground and then do a dress reveal and then let's do, you know. So yeah, and then you're just following the schedule. Um, whereas run and gun, like at an event or something, you, the only option is really something like what we did, you know, yeah. just like, oh, people are doing what they're doing. Let's just get cool stuff. Um, I think it's, it's kind of like almost like more documentary in style, like let's find exactly. the story in the footage, you know. Or like, I like to think of it as like, let's just say you're shooting an event and like I shot one back in December. It was a big citywide portrait event and I was shooting video for it. And that was definitely one of those run and gun, just shoot what is happening. Mm -hmm. And then they wanted it put together into a highlight reel. And highlight reels, <laughs> highlight reels, there is no story. There just, no. there just isn't. But, but in that- There can be. There, uh, you know. But it's like, yeah, right, right, right. You a have to bit. really, there's a story, but it's like never, it's, it's not it, like a movie. It's not concrete. Right. It's not, it's not like coherent. Right. Um, whereas the things that, you know, you have the time before, and sometimes you don't always have the time, but sometimes when you have the time to sit and plan and think about right. what story am I trying to tell and then shoot according to that, it's just, right. it's just better. Right. 
And I think one of the interesting things with that challenge is we didn't really think that hard about our stories. I mean, we just kind of were like, oh, okay, we had these two situations, coffee and vinyl. Mm -hmm. It's so hipster. Coffee and vinyl, it is very hip. <laughs> it is very hipster. You shot the vinyl unicorn B-roll, I shot the coffee unicorn B-roll, and that was a lot of fun, but it's... They're unicorn B-roll. I mean, they are what they are. They're lit really cool. The shots look pretty good. Some of the camera movements in them are awesome. But yeah, it's like pulling a story out of that is doable. I think we both managed to achieve it, but it's not ideal. Whereas in the second one, we took those same scenarios. We switched. So I did coffee story. Yep. You did vinyl story. Yeah. Um, and then we took some time while the other person was shooting their unicorn B-roll to kind of think through our story. Yep. And then we shot those. So the interesting part about this was the first challenge, we didn't have a story, we just shot it and made it look cool in post. Whereas the second one, it was hard to think of the story and mm. then have to shoot it. So all the stress that I had in editing the first one, I didn't in the second one. Yeah. But all of the planning stress was happening while you were shooting your unicorn B-roll thing. And you're, and you're over there like, yeah. oh, what am I'm I I'm like holding do? this light reflector, helping you light your scene. And I'm just like, how am I gonna tell a story about coffee? I started to overthink it. Yeah. I, and then, yeah. But in the editing room, it was so much easier to put together because I already had the vision, I already knew what the story was, and all those decisions were almost like limited because you can only make this or that decision and still be in line with whatever story you chose. Yeah, exactly. Because you, like you had it all planned beforehand, so when you get into post, it's like, okay, so the story is this. Therefore, this shot, this shot, this shot, this shot, this order. Right. Like, easy. And it, yeah, it kind of sews itself together. And because, I think anyway, because you, had the time to plan because we had the time to plan the second go around. We're, right. we're shooting for a story that right. also that also affects things like, um, like in post production, like your overall look, your color grade, your, like because you have that visually right. in mind already because you have your story. It's, right. Instead of trying to build a car out of house Lego pieces. Mm -hmm like we were before. <laughs> <laughs> I will say this has actually been the biggest change I've made as a freelancer this year in all of my jobs. Uh, last year, a lot of my work was, it kind of went like this. I'd have one meeting with a client and they would be telling me what they want shot. You know, it'd be like, oh, hey, we want you to shoot this product that we made or this event, or we want to just, you know, have our founder talk about our company or whatever. And I'd be like, okay, cool, sounds great. I'll charge you by the hour and I'll show up and we'll shoot it. And then I'd spend a lot of time figuring out the story in post mm -hmm. and still made some okay stuff. This year, January 1st, I was like, no more of that. Yeah. <laughs> and so now I've required a consultation and then a scripting meeting. And so I've taken the lead on writing scripts and the content is just so much better. Yeah. Um, some of the stuff I've shot where either I wrote the whole script myself or the client and I together wrote it, or even I've had a couple that wrote their own scripts and I just kind of revised them or, uh -huh. you know, it's so much easier on the day of the shoot. It's so much easier in the editing room because all those decisions are already made. And then you have a grid for knowing, at least on set, if something was good or not. Cause like, this is the story we're telling. Did that shot accomplish that? Yes or no. As opposed to, well, that looked cool. Hopefully it works. Um, and so at least professionally, it's a really good move to start moving in the direction of our second, uh, our second challenge, which was to write a story, write a story. Right. I mean, really, we just kind of like just mentally had an idea. Yeah, mentally yeah. write your script. Mentally storyboard, and then film it with that frame, so that you know, instead of the look of it being what drives it, it's the story. You're about to see what I shot, but for before I before before you do, go watch Drews. There's a you know little eye thing or. There's annotations and stuff. There's a button. Look for the push button. Push the button. <laughs> Usually it says don't push the button and then you push it. Yeah. So maybe we should say don't push. The don't push the button. Don't push the little eye thing up here. Mm. Um, that'll take you to Drew's and mine's better. And my video sucks. <laughs> yeah. Um, and this is what we came up with.
So, story. Story is definitely more prevalent here, um, which, you know, given that this is that part of the challenge, duh. Right. I fiddled around with a couple of different ideas. I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do in terms of story. It was kind of, you know, like, like Drew said earlier, you're, you're trying to figure this stuff out on the fly. Right. And it's hard, to, to put it mildly. But I feel like once you get the baseline, like even if it's just an idea for the first shot, Mm -hmm. and that first shot tells a story, everything else kind of falls into place. Right. Like, And that is what happened with yours. We figured out what we wanted the first shot to do, and everything else just was like, oh yeah, God. Yeah, I mean, the first shot, and, you know, I'm just going to go into explaining it here. The first shot, right, you're coming in. Right. So it's like, it's like, okay, you're coming in from outside, <clears throat> and you're coming into the house. So it's like, okay, that automatically makes you think, all right, he's coming from mm -hmm. somewhere. Maybe, you know, given the way you're dressed, maybe it's work or mm -hmm. a meeting or whatever. And given the fact that you're not, you know, you're not smiling about it, you're not happy, you're not, you know, it's not upbeat, it's it, it's right. a slower, more of a drab kind of entrance. It's like, mm -hmm. all right, well, maybe that didn't go so well. You know, that, like the fact that you pour yourself a drink and sit down and you're just kind of sitting there. Mm -hmm. You know, you're either thinking about how everything went that day, maybe it wasn't so great, maybe you just have a lot on your plate. There's a lot more there in terms of feeling. Like, right. you're, you're not just making it look good. You're conveying to your audience that, okay, maybe there's something up. They're, they're wondering what's going on. They're curious, maybe mm -hmm. they're worried, or, mm -hmm. you know, there's far more draw to that mm -hmm. than there is something that's just unicorn B-roll. Right, yeah, the thing I really like about this is, I mean, just as we've said, all the decisions are based on that initial story. And I remember when, when you kind of figured it out and we're like, oh, it's gonna be, a depressed guy relaxing by listening to records and drinking whiskey, which is like kind of cliche, but actually it, works. It's very cliche, but it does work. Yeah. And even, I mean, obviously how I was dressed, how I was acting, but even the cinematography, like the moment I really think of is after I sit down with my glass of whiskey, that shot, there's actually foreground elements almost blocking me. Yeah. Showing that there's, there's like the blockage occurring in me mm -hmm. emotionally. Right. And that's yeah. demonstrated by the, the cinematography in the foreground that's in there. And then the next shot, when I see the record player and there's that really the, the, awesome <laughs> the focus rack. The dope focus rack, that, yeah. Yeah. Um, after that the moment, one, the, though, the one that we tried five times. Yeah. Yeah. And I was trying not to drink the whiskey because I had to. I had to be somewhere. Yeah. And I was like, I don't. You're like, I don't want to be. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I, I thought about drive. that later, and I was like, we probably just could use something that looked like whiskey. Yeah, it's okay. Oh, well. We used, it was real whiskey. I took like a quarter sip. It wasn't even like a full sip. Anyways, but after that, I'm opened up. Like once the record's playing, you know. Yeah, the record's and so, playing, and you're just. Oh, I can finally relax, and yeah, it, it was good. Uh, the other thing I thought about too, I don't even, I don't even know if we did this as outright intentionally. It might have been subconsciously driven by the story. The way that we lit that was adding to the dramatic, you know what I mean? Like we had those two soft boxes bouncing off the ceiling and just kind of giving it this muddy, hazy light on my yeah, face. Yeah, and it's kind of, yeah. And it's kind of like drab, which is actually the, like with my short sequence, what I hated about it, because that room is so drab when you light it. But right. with yours, it worked for the story. Mm -hmm. um, and then that light behind really kind of giving presence to the record Just kind player. of kicking everything up and it's like, oh. Yeah, it's almost know. like the suitcase in Pulp Fiction, Boom. just like glowing. Yes. Which by the way, I want to use that light that, oh, why am I, it's not up there anymore. I want to use that aperture light to like mimic that effect sometimes. You mean that one? Yeah. <laughs> it was up there when we were, anyways, whatever. Anyway, yeah. Yeah, so I, I think, think that I was feel, a really good story. I feel you though, like like story will definitely influence your choices as a, as a cinematographer. Right. And, and a lot of times there are some, times where you won't even necessarily think about it probably as much as you should but mm -hmm. it ends up working anyway the thing that um i wasn't i mean like i was thinking about it and trying to incorporate it in while i was shooting but wasn't thinking about it too much was the fact that the story arc of what i did was conflict action resolution right you're coming in, you're bummed, all that sort of stuff. You know, you pour yourself a drink, you sit down, you're clearly depressed, right? Mm -hmm. So there's there's your conflict. There's something going on. The audience is right. able to figure out that there's something going on and it wasn't great. There's a problem. There's a problem. So there's your conflict. And then your action is you pour yourself a drink, you put a you put a record on. You know, there's that's that's doing something. Your resolution is, okay, you can finally chill. Mm 
mm -hmm. you know. And story arcs, even if they're stupid, crazy short, story arcs like that will always be far more interesting than just visual nonsense. Right. Yeah, and I think, I think that's like the takeaway, right? Um, with my vinyl sequence, there was a narrative movement. There were plot points yeah. of take the record out of the sleeve, put it on there, hit hit play, the needle drops. You know, you don't hit play on a record, the needle drops. <laughs> yeah, the needle drops, um, yeah. <laughs> And there, so there was, there were plot points, but there wasn't any um, tone. There wasn't any ebb and flow. There was no conflict, you know, and yeah. there was no resolution. I mean, unless, I guess you could argue that the whole thing was a resolution to something, but there's not right. enough information to determine that. So it's just a cool sequence about a record player being used. I mean, look at it this way. Your vinyl unicorn b-roll sequence yeah. and my coffee unicorn b-roll sequence. It's not that there's no story. There is a story there. Right. But it's like, okay, girl putting on a record or a girl making coffee and it looks cool. All right, cool. But what it doesn't answer is the question of why. Why yes. is she putting on the record? Why is she yep. making it? Why? Like, you know, what is the driving force behind this? And for mm -hmm. those sequences, it's just looking cool. That's literally it. Right. That's what influenced all our decisions. And I think that's the lesson too, is we could have easily found a way to motivate the pink lighting yeah. and make that a justified decision that was really cool in the story, right? Like if it was some sort of cyberpunk coffee sequence or something. Anyways to prevent us Blade from just rambling on. I think that's that's the takeaway is what is the driving factor of the story and how does it fit that narrative arc? And the, the difference is and I actually I actually want to make more videos talking about this. The difference is plot points versus actual story yeah. engine, you know. Like uh, the, the way the way I kind of approach it is I mean, yes, I am I'm guilty of this too. I shoot stuff just cuz it looks cool. Right. And sometimes I do stuff with it, sometimes I don't. But I think that I've definitely started doing in terms of all of my, you know, my, my shooting and producing content is every time I shoot now, I ask myself the question, before I shoot something, why am I showing the audience this? Yep. Like, what is the, re like, why do I think they need to see this in this particular order? Mm -hmm. You know, there's al there always has to be a reason behind it. And the more you can make that reason more substantial than just looking cool, the better your content's gonna be across the board. Right. And then you won't have as much footage either, which is- Exactly. Always, always a plus. So so that's it. That was our little challenge. It was make something that looks cool and try and make it somehow cohesive. Mm -hmm. And we got what we got. And then as you've seen, if you watched both videos, uh, you saw both of our stories where we came up with the story and every single component was motivated by that story with as much intentionality as possible in you know that really short time frame right what are your thoughts on the differences also if you've only watched one of our long story or not long stories if you've only watched one of our story segments click here to watch the other persons and then again tell us in the comments which one did you like better which one left you a more powerful feeling it's probably the story one. Yeah, but if it's if you think we're wrong about that let us know too if you want to do the challenge yourself go for it we'd love to see your responses and if you're on my channel Subscribe to Paul. Yeah, and if you're on mine, go 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 drop this guy a sub and then you know the little notification bell? Legend has it, it actually makes a noise if you smack it, so let me know if that's true. I'm I haven't the gumption to go smack it on his channel. Yeah, don't smack don't smack my bell. I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah. Go <Yikes>. ahead. <laughs> go smack his bell. Oh my god. Oh um, my gosh. Yeah, cool. By the way, next challenge is also a short sequence, story driven, not just looking good, but one take. The nineteen seventeen. The nineteen seventeen challenge. Oh challenge. god! Well, his you're almost you almost did that, but that would be. A I good almost challenge. I almost did. That, I like right. that. That's the next one. Is the one take challenge? Can, are you allowed to hide it? Hide a cut? No. Oh, like a legit one take. A legit one take. Like, okay, one take, but we can do the take multiple times till we get it, or we only get to try no, it no, no, no. once. You can do it multiple times until you get it, but it has to. The final sequence has to be one continuous take with no hidden edits. No. Okay. Yeah. It would be cool to do it where you only get one shot, though. That would be, but. But then we, we both suck. We both and you suck. Know it. <laughs> <laughs> cool. So that'll be our next challenge. We're gonna do a one take shot. Yeah. 
no oh. no hidden cuts. A one take a one take story sequence. A one take. We have to do BTS for that to prove that we to didn't prove that it is that, that it was only one right. take. Um, have you ever done that before? Like a a a narrative sequence in a single take? No, I haven't. Okay. I'm gonna have a slight edge because I've done that before. I mean, I've thought but... about doing it. There was one job I was gonna do that type of thing for, and then I had a bunch of B-roll as a safety, and I ended up using it, and I was like, man, yeah, fair just, point. It was more interesting that way. So. Yeah, but so that'll be our next challenge, and that's okay. de that's definitely gonna be interesting. So, hopefully, you guys enjoyed. If you're on my channel, go sub to him. If you're on his channel, what are you doing over there? Jeez. If you're on my channel, you're probably just watching my dumb vlogs. So thank you for watching those. Those are actually kind of fun to watch. Yeah, they're kind of fun. We don't have sprouted mung bean burgers. But we might. <laughs> <laughs> Can we just say that at the end of every video? <laughs> right. There you go. Uh.